What led to the fall of Count Dooku, a once great Jedi who studied under Master Yoda and even mentored Qui-Gon Jinn? If you only watch the Star Wars movies, it's very cut and dry. Count Dooku is the bad guy and he must be killed which he is later on. But if you only watch the movies, what you don't realize is this character is actually extremely complex and not really that bad of a guy. Count Dooku is extremely powerful and knowledgeable in the Force because he studied under people like Master Yoda and even Emperor Palpatine. That means Dooku studied under two of the most powerful beings from the Jedi and from the Sith. Not only did he do this, he also mentored, in my opinion, what the Jedi should have always been, Qui-Gon Jinn. You may not realize this, but Qui-Gon Jinn actually shared a lot of the same beliefs that Count Dooku did, especially when it came to the Council. During Count Dooku's time in the Jedi, he disagreed with the Council very often, but so did Qui-Gon Jinn. One of the biggest differences between the two characters is the fact that Qui-Gon Jinn actually stayed with the Jedi. Count Dooku left, but why? There are multiple factors that led to Count Dooku making the decision to actually leave the Jedi Order and kind of go do his own thing. But what's really interesting and rare about Count Dooku is after he left the Jedi Order, he visited the temple very often to study the force. There are really two main points that it boils down to for why Count Dooku actually left the Jedi Order, and one of those being that he disagreed with how the Jedi Council ran things. He wanted to be able to do what he thought was right, and really in most cases what was right, without having to go through the Council and possibly having them disagree. Not only did he disagree with them, he just didn't like what they were becoming. Count Dooku started to notice that the Jedi were basically being used as pawns by the government. And I don't know if you know this, but the Jedi is a religion and there's no reason they should be used by the government. Yes, they are powerful and they are just keepers of the peace, but you saw what they eventually turned into. They were generals in a war. It kind of seems like Count Dooku saw this coming. He not only had problems with the Jedi, but he had major problems with the corruption in the Senate. And that's really what led to him realizing the Jedi were being used as pawns and he didn't want to be a part of that. Because Dooku left the Jedi Order, it made it even easier for Darth Sidious to get a hold of him. This is where it really starts to lead to his fall to the dark side. Palpatine started manipulating Count Dooku, promising him all these things about bringing peace to the galaxy. However, Count Dooku was still kind of on the fence about it and you can see this happening in Tales of the Jedi. That show did wonders for this character. Manipulation by Palpatine, corruption in the government, and him disagreeing with the Jedi and what they were becoming, it really just kind of all fell together. But the biggest point in Count Dooku's life that really just had him completely commit to the dark side was the death of his Padawan Qui-Gon Jinn. Dooku viewed Qui-Gon as his child. That was his son that he basically raised and taught everything he knew. Whenever Qui-Gon died, it completely broke Count Dooku. You can even see the shift in Dooku whenever you watch Tales of the Jedi after Qui-Gon's death. And before he died, Dooku was even excited to meet Obi-Wan Kenobi. Once that happened and Dooku fell, I think he also realized the true dangers of having a Sith rule the galaxy. Dooku thought he would be able to manipulate Palpatine by following his teachings and helping him with whatever he needs throughout the galaxy, but eventually betraying him. You see signs of this throughout the Clone Wars, especially when it comes to like Asajj Ventress. Dooku genuinely felt like he was doing the right thing, which I think makes him such a great character. Yes, he fell to the dark side. Yes, he became an apprentice to the Dark Lord of the Sith but he did not want the Sith to rule everything. One of the most genuine moments from this character is in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, when he's talking to Obi-Wan Kenobi after he captured him on Geonosis. It's a great pity that our paths have never crossed before, Obi-Wan. Qui-Gon always spoke very highly of you. I wish he were still alive. I could use his help right now. Qui-Gon Jinn would never join you. Don't be so sure, my young Jedi. You forget that he was once my apprentice, just as you were once his. He knew all about the corruption in the Senate, but he would never have gone along with it if he had learned the truth as I have. The truth? The truth. What if I told you that the Republic was now under the control of the Dark Lord of the Sith? No, that's not possible. The Jedi would be aware of it. The dark side of the Force has clouded their vision, my friend. Hundreds of Senators are now under the influence of a Sith Lord called Darth Sidious. I don't believe you. The Viceroy of the Trade Federation was once in league with this Darth Sidious. But he was betrayed ten years ago by the Dark Lord. He came to me for help. He told me everything. You must join me, Obi-Wan. 
and together we will destroy the Sith. Watching this scene, you can see Dooku shipped back to that younger version of himself before Qui-Gon died, and he's being very genuine with Obi-Wan, and he wants to take down Sidious. Over the years, Palpatine gives him many different orders to carry out throughout the galaxy to continue this master plan during the Clone Wars. But because the Emperor has been deceiving him this entire time and never really planned for him to survive the Clone Wars, that's what led to his death. He just didn't see it coming. Whenever Dooku fights Obi-Wan and Anakin, the surprise on his face when he's actually defeated is for two reasons. The fact that he was defeated by Anakin, but also because he didn't expect the Emperor to have Anakin kill him. Count Dooku is such a complex but great character. If you haven't watched Tales of the Jedi, absolutely go watch it because it does wonders for this character. Do it. What Tales of the Jedi does is make everything not so cut and dry. This is something I absolutely love all throughout Star Wars. This universe and the characters within it are so complex and every project they make, except the sequels, adds another layer to the entire story. If you love Star Wars as much as I do, make sure you subscribe for a ton of Star Wars content every single day. Make sure you check out the rest of the content, especially the what ifs like this one. I appreciate you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you.